All right, I'm actually shooting this intro after my trip. My wife and I have come here to Crystal River, Florida. If you remember, we were here about 16 months ago in April. I fished with Captain C.A. Richardson. My goal then was to catch a snook. I did catch one. It wasn't a very big one, though. It was like 13 inches. After that trip, I vowed to come back to try and catch a legitimate snook on my own. And that's what this trip is about. We're here for five nights. Last night was our first night. I fished this morning. And man, it was just an absolutely incredible fishing experience. Take a look. All right, as you can tell, I am way outside my comfort zone today. I'm in Crystal River, Florida. I'm down here to try and catch a snook. Not only that, I'm not in my Avid. I'm in a kayak. You know, I don't do a ton of kayak fishing, but here I am exploring this area, really toward the mouth of the actual Crystal River. My first morning here, it's a beautiful one. We got an east wind blowing about five knots. Other than that, conditions look really good. It's supposed to be a rising tide beginning in about 30 minutes. I think we're kind of at the the end of the fall so i definitely like that rising tide push those snook up close to these mangroves i'm gonna start this morning with a top dog trying to get some blow-ups on that really don't have any idea what i'm doing i've only caught one snook in my life and it was a small one but i'm gonna try and get a bigger one today wish me luck some type of anomaly right here oh, that was an oyster reef it's exposed at low tide i'm not sure what that is i'm gonna try and fish around that Just heard an explosion on top. It wasn't on me. Ooh, lots of bait. We need to get around and fish that. Approach it from upwind. Saw a mullet. Oh goodness, I got smoked. I got smoked. Don't know what that was. My bait was just sitting still, but he missed it. Oh goodness. It was probably a trout, if I had to guess. But it could have been a big line side. Man, something is destroying some bait. Oh, there he is. Goodness. That might be a snook. That might be a snook. That might be a snook. That first jump didn't, didn't look like a trout. If it's a trout, it's a big one. Oh, goodness. Man, I am shaking. I am shaking. Got a net. He hasn't come up again. I'm thinking this could be a snook. <laughs> oh, please don't get off. Please don't get off. Please don't get off. Please don't get off. It's a snook. It's a snook. Oh my goodness. It's a beautiful snook. Oh, come on, dude, don't get off. Oh my goodness, it's a pig. It's a pig. Oh my goodness. It's a big, beautiful snook. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. I can't tell you how jacked I am. Man, I wish I had a net with some length. Oh. 
I gotta exhaust this dude, it's all I can do. Oh goodness, please don't get off. Please don't get off. Please don't get off. Come on, dude. Oh goodness. No, 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 no. Look at this guy. Oh, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. I cannot tell you how excited I am to get this fish. This is just absolutely awesome. All right, he's exhausted. I'm exhausted. Right on that anomaly that I talked about, this is just absolutely awesome. Now I got treble hooks right between my legs. Not exactly, uh, a desirable situation but i gotta i gotta get this fish back in the water all right this is absolutely a fish of a lifetime for me it's a big beautiful snook i've been wanting this fish for so long and i finally got him caught him on my own this is just so awesome to me i'm so excited to have this fish he's about he's about 24 25 inches just a beautiful snook i gotta get him back and revive this thing but man my day is made and it just started come on dude all right, come on, there you go, there you go. <laughs> I cannot tell you how excited I am to catch that fish. You can probably tell. I drove eight hours down here to hopefully catch a snook and I caught it within the first five minutes. Just incredible. <laughs> I'm gonna go catch another one. All right, now any of you viewers from Central or South Florida are probably thinking, this guy's an idiot. It's just a snook, big deal. But I tell you what, to me, it is a big deal. We don't have snook in South Louisiana where I fish. I lived in Central Florida for a while when I was in college. Broke, no money, read all the time about snook and how awesome of a fish they are, and just dreamed about getting out to catch one. Never even attempted when I lived here. As much as I wanted to, I simply couldn't afford it. But I really wanted to come and catch one of my own. And to have that happen in the first five minutes of the trip is just, I can't tell you how cool that is. Just absolutely awesome. That's that anomaly I was fishing. Got three blow ups. We'll see if anything is still there. As you can tell, that sky is starting to brighten. Perhaps now you can see I'm throwing a mirror lure. It's either a top dog or a sea eyes. I can't remember. Got three good blow ups. I'm guessing they were all snook a couple of other points right near this there's so much bait here but i made several casts haven't got another blow up little point here and another more significant point here i try and get upwind of those and make a couple casts on them unfortunately the tide's moving the same direction as this wind so it's a little difficult to hold position i'll go through my rig i got a akuma evx medium power rod I got 30 pound soft steel braid main line and I've got a 30 pound soft steel fluoro stretch leader. That 30 pound fluoro leader to me would be a little bit heavy, but one of the YouTube channels I watch doing research for this trip is a guy named Justin Menendez and he uses 50 pound, 50 pound fluoro and he catches a ton of snook. So that's why I decided to go with a 30. Well, this is pretty too with this water coming between these islands. We'll make a cast there and then hit these hit these points on the way back. So this is kind of a mix of smooth core grass and mangroves. Some of the islands like that are just really solid mangroves. And you can see, maybe you can see, that tide's way far out. Tons of roots exposed. It should be coming back soon, but it is still falling right now. Now perhaps you can see the exposed roots on those mangroves. Well, you can see that sun's now starting to pop up. I'm not going to throw this top water too much longer. If I was hardcore, I definitely would, but I, I just, I don't care how I catch them. I just want to catch some snook. All right, I'm heading back to that point I was talking about. We'll try and get a bite there. I don't know much about snook, but what I know is that they're ambush predators. So I like strong current areas where they can just kind of get in those little eddies and ambush anything that happens by. Ooh, ooh, there's a hit. Oh, he missed it. Okay. 
another hit on our point. The first hit was nothing impressive. The second one was. Now, admittedly, it didn't seem similar to that snook hit or any of the snook hits we got this morning. So it could have been a trout. I don't know how well you can see it, but we were right on the edge of the coast. That's all offshore. That's just Gulf of Mexico there. This is the mouth of the Crystal River. And that's the exposed oyster reef where we caught our snook. We caught it on the, on the other side. Now this tide's falling even farther out. I can see a nice grass bed here. Lots of grass. So basically we have this oyster reef, a little channel between them, and grass beds here. Definitely a good looking spot. You can see why we caught our fish here. Again, I don't know anything, but logic would seem to dictate those fish moved off the mangroves with that falling tide and are located on kind of more offshore stuff like this. I'm betting as the day moves on and that tide rises, they'll transition back to those mangroves, getting that shade. No, 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 it's not real. Get out of here, stupid bird. You're supposed to have great eyesight, you're an idiot. Now, I always have trouble sleeping the night before a fishing trip, even still, <laughs> at my age. It's like I'm 12 still. But last night I didn't sleep a wink. Literally didn't fall asleep at all. That's how much today meant to me. And catching that snook just, man, just made it all worth it. Hopefully we run across others, but even if we don't, my trip has been made. Trip has been made in the first five minutes. I should probably abandon this top water, but still a shot to catch one on top. I'm not gonna give it too much longer though. That sun's pretty high. There are people who say time of day doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not one of those guys, particularly in the summer. I think it absolutely matters. You can see on that buoy how much that tide's falling. It's ripping out. So I'll have to endure a change and then when it starts rising, I'll have a lot more confidence, particularly in these mangroves. It's a couple little creek drains on this side of the river with this tide still falling. Let's see if one of those is gonna hold a big line side. Should we stick with our top water? Hmm, I don't know. I think I am. I think I'm gonna stick with it. It was a flock of seagulls. I'm gonna wait to take a cast. Idiots. came off no <laughs> no oh my goodness I was just checking my camera angle <gasps> oh goodness I'm thinking that was another snook well I tell you what if that had happened on the first one I would have been heartbroken oh he missed it I'm getting a lot of bites with that bait just sitting still. Even earlier. I've tried to pause it a lot, <laughs> but you know, it never works when you try it. Ah, damn it. So one thing I've noticed in Crystal River, it is a deer fly central. It, they're terrible. I was hoping this little bit of breeze would have blown them off. But man, we got here yesterday, it was still, and we got devoured. Deer flies are the absolute worst because they, they're relentless. They don't leave you alone. Now, I did bring some Skeeter Hawk. I haven't put it on yet because I've been kind of lazy. Just distracted, I guess, but I really got to put it on. They're tearing me up. Hopefully it works on Crystal River deer flies like it does on South Louisiana deer flies. I would imagine it does. There comes another idiot. Get out of here, you moron. Oh, here comes another one. Nope, it's not real, idiot. Go. I wish it fooled as many fish. All right, I'm gonna make an unconventional change. I got a few blow-ups along this shoreline, so it makes me want to make another pass here, but not with this bait. I'm actually gonna tie on a crankbait, an SP57, which if you're a regular viewer, you know I absolutely love. 
one of my favorite baits. Got a lot of confidence in it. But I got to get upwind and up tide. Be back in a minute. All right, and here's my unconventional bait, SP57 and Lavender Shad. Been super hot for me in Louisiana. Don't know if it'll catch anything here in Central Florida. Definitely won't with the line wrapped around the rod tip. But I don't see why a snook wouldn't hit this. Such a great, good looking bait. The only concern I have is whether this water's gonna be deep enough for it. Oh, looky there. The tide has begun to rise. Well, that's interesting. The tide has switched. It's not screaming in, but it's definitely coming in. Sometimes your ears are your best friend in fishing. I was just sitting here changing camera batteries and something died on that point right there. Heard it and turned around to see the, the remnant of the ripples. So I'll make my way over there, see if it's a fish just sitting on that point or if he just happened to move through there. Man, look at this current line here. Just waiting for one to just rip the rod out of my hands. This looks very, very fishy. Look at this current line. Oh, oh, I got smoked. Dad gummit. Oh, how'd that fish miss it? He was hooked up for a second, right on that point. All right, I'm upwind from where I, I put in and where I'm gonna take out. So I'm gonna work my way back. I'm gonna fish my way there. Hopefully run across another one. These snook are definitely tough to catch, particularly in a kayak. So you don't necessarily come out here thinking you're gonna mop up. I certainly didn't. What's nice about right now is that wind and tide are going in opposite directions. So you can fish a lot more slowly, a lot more comfortably. This current line just looks too good to not have a fish on it. Does snook hang out on current lines <laughs> like speckled trout do? I don't know. I don't know. Any of you locals want to offer some information? I'd love to be educated. All right, I reached my takeout spot. What an absolutely epic morning. Hooked two fish, landed one. Definitely would have liked to have landed more, but I got some stuff figured out today that I'm hoping to put into use tomorrow and maybe have even a little bit more success. But believe me, I am absolutely thrilled. My goal on this trip was to catch one snook and I did that within the first five minutes. Pat myself on the back. Just an absolutely fantastic day. I'm really, really excited, but I'll be back at it tomorrow. All right, I'm back at it for day number two. Super early, couldn't sleep again last night. Sunrise isn't for another hour and a half or so, but I'm on site, just about to launch my kayak. It'll be pitch black, but I wanna be on the water and in position for that top water bite again. I'm fishing the exact same area I fished the other day. Really similar tide situations. Gonna be the end of the falling tide when I start. And I'm kind of learning a little bit about the tides here. More about that in a minute. Let's get on the water. All right, as you can tell, it's still early, but it, the sun is starting to brighten that Eastern horizon. I've been sitting here waiting like about 45 minutes. <laughs> Just waiting for day to start breaking. And I just heard some poor mullet or something lose its life, something destroyed it. So it's time to start throwing this. The sea eyes, this is the bait I caught my snook on my last trip. I'm heading in the direction of that emergent oyster reef, but in all honesty, I can't really see it yet. It's just too dark, but I know I'm kind of in the general vicinity. This wind's gonna push me into it eventually. And the wind is blowing this morning. There's a thunderstorm off, just offshore. It's supposed to be here around 8 a.m. so I may not be able to fish long but the wind's blowing out of that. Blowing probably a sustained 12 with gusts of I don't know 15 or so out of the west and we do have a falling tide just like our last trip. All right we made a bunch of casts on this reef seeing plenty of mullet but no blow-ups today. Of course every day is different so we got to find where they are today. All right, I'm in what I think they call South Pass or, or South Branch or something. There's a point here. I'm gonna work this whole shoreline. There's a bunch of drains as you move along the shoreline with this falling tide. Just seems like a likely place to hold a fish. Now, one thing I discovered about the tides here is there are actually four tides in a day. Back home, there are only two, one high, one low. Here, there's two high, two low. And for fishing these mangroves, you really want to fish that high tide. Of course, the morning right now is almost the bottom of the low. It's falling right now. It'll probably fall another hour or two before it switches. The other day, I did fish during the switch by the end of my trip it was rising and it rises quickly very quickly but that rising tide puts those snook up against those mangroves i'm thinking an ideal time to fish would be at the beginning of the fall when that tide is high and starts pulling out of those mangroves pulling bait out 
but those fish still have enough water up against the mangroves to feel comfortable. I mean, you can see from this angle, <laughs> look at the roots exposed on these mangroves. That's where those fish should be hiding when that tide is high. Makes them a little more predictable. So all you locals, give me some pointers. What would you be fishing at the end of a falling tide? Ooh. Oh, there he is. There he is. All right, Snook. Snook, 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 Snook. Snook, Snook. He's giving me a sleigh ride. Yes, it's, oh, good God, it's a giant. Did you see that fish? Oh, God, it's a giant. Oh, my God. All right, come on, dude. No, come on this way. Holy Toledo, that's a, that's a tank. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, that's a tank. Whew. Whew, whoo, whoo. That is a tank. <laughs> don't get off. I don't want you to get off, but if you do, my day is freaking made. My trip is made. Oh my goodness. Whew. Whew. Oh my goodness. All right, get the net, Todd. Oh goodness. Stay hooked up, dude. Stay hooked up. Come on, I gotta exhaust you. Whew. Come on, dude. Yeah, come on in this side. All right, all right, all right, come on. Come on, you're done. I'm gonna let you go. He won't fit in my freaking net. Oh my goodness. Look at this snook. Look at this pig. Look at this tank. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. Look at this snook. All right, all right, let's put you up here. Please don't go crazy. All right, I gotta get my bait out of this thing before he puts it in my leg and then I'll show them to you. All right, dude, don't go crazy. I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you did, but please don't, please don't. Got the bait out. This awesome freaking sea eyes. <laughs> oh, there he goes. There he goes. I was about to show him to you and he went nuts. That's all right, that's a landed fish. I tell you what, that was just an absolute giant. Whew. Oh, shaking. What a day. What a freaking day. First hit of the morning. We got storms rolling in. My trip's probably almost over. <laughs> and a gorilla, gorilla snook. I am one happy man. I love this place. Crystal River, you will definitely see me again. No doubt about it. I will be back. This is just incredible. Love it. All right, no fish is worth dying for, including snook. And there's a bunch of islands right out here offshore. They're all getting doused, lightning popping everywhere. There's my truck. So I'm making my way toward it, ending a short but very successful fishing trip right here in paradise. <laughs> I love this place. I might move here. Would you still watch the channel if it was Mangrove Man Masson? Absolutely love this place. 